The rivalry between Alexander Volkanovsky and Max Holloway has been one of the most captivating storylines in the UFC featherweight division. After three intense battles, it seemed like their trilogy had reached its conclusion. However, Holloway's recent victory and acquisition of the BMF title has reignited Volkanovsky's interest in a potential fourth showdown. Volkanovsky, reflecting on Holloway's impressive performance against Justin Gaethje, acknowledged the significance of the BMF title now being in play. He sees it as a new element that could make a fourth fight with Holloway more enticing. Despite holding a commanding 3-0 lead in their head-to-head -head matchups, Volkanovsky recognizes the added intrigue of competing for a title he hasn't touched before. While Volkanovsky initially questioned his motivation for another fight with Holloway given their previous outcomes, the introduction of the BMF title has sparked his interest. He now sees the potential for a fresh chapter in their rivalry, fueled by the allure of the BMF belt. Alex said this. Would I fight him again? Now he's got the BMF, we might have to do this, you know what I mean? We'll see what happens. I was always sitting there like, how could you do it? But maybe there is something there. There's the BMF now. For me, it's like, 3 to 0, how can you get yourself out of bed for that? The BMF is something that I haven't touched before, so maybe we can do that. We'll see what happens. However, the featherweight title picture remains uncertain, with Volkanovski eyeing a rematch with Ilya Topuria for the divisional championship. Meanwhile, Holloway's stellar performance has positioned him as a strong contender for a title shot, potentially complicating Volkanovski's path to a fourth fight with Holloway. As both fighters weigh their options, the possibility of a Volkanovski vs Holloway tetralogy looms, with the added intrigue of the BMF title hanging in the balance. Mavsar Evloev's victory over Arnold Allen at UFC 297 marked a significant milestone in his career, propelling him into the top five rankings at featherweight. Despite the success, UFC president Dana White expressed criticism of the fight and Evloev's performance during the post-fight press conference. Evloev, however, didn't take White's comments lightly and addressed them on the Badayev podcast. He speculated that White may have been trying to undermine his accomplishment or perhaps motivate him in some way. Adding context to the situation, Evloyev revealed that Dan Lambert, founder of American Top Team, provided insight into White's behavior during the fight. According to Lambert, White was distracted, watching American football on his monitor and potentially even had a bet placed on the fight. He said this. Then, for some reason, Dana said that my last fight was not entertaining. Maybe he wanted to motivate me somehow or dampen my championship ambitions a little. Then we talked with Dan Lambert after the fight. He said, Mavsar, I was sitting next to Dana White during your fight, and he was watching American football. He had apparently placed a bet somewhere during my fight. I told Dana, I'm not here to amuse you, I came here for the belt. I'll take the belt, and then we'll see. In response to White's criticism, Evloev asserted his focus on championship ambitions rather than aiming to entertain the UFC president. He made it clear that his priority is to pursue the belt and prove his worth in the octagon. With his eyes set on championship glory, Evloev remains undeterred by any external commentary and is determined to continue his pursuit of UFC gold. This is breaking news. The long-awaited fight between UFC champ Dreykus Duplessis and Israel Adesanya is confirmed for an upcoming pay-per-view event in Perth. UFC 305 will be held in Perth and the main event will be between Duplessis and Adesanya, which comes as no surprise to mixed martial arts fans as the two have been scheduled to face off for some time. This fight also makes sense when you consider that a rematch between Duplessis and Strickland will not take place as Costa will face Sean next and decide who will earn the number one contender spot.
Daniel Cormier's playful grappling match with Alex Pereira at UFC 301 Media Day sparked some buzz among fans, with many speculating about the outcome of their brief scuffle. In a recent podcast with Sonnen, Cormier shed some light on the encounter, addressing the reactions it received and clarifying his intentions. Cormier admitted that he allowed Pereira to score a takedown on him during their friendly exchange. He likened the situation to his past experiences wrestling with active competitors like Khabib Nurmagomedov, explaining that it's common practice for retired athletes to put over their counterparts by making them look good. Essentially, Cormier was trying to highlight Pereira's skills and keep the atmosphere lighthearted. Acknowledging the playful nature of the interaction, Cormier emphasized that there was no ulterior motive behind letting Pereira take him down. Instead, it was a gesture of respect towards the active fighter and a nod to the camaraderie shared among athletes, regardless of their competitive backgrounds. DC said this, You know what's weird? I play around with these guys, and I'm getting taken down. There was a while back that people thought Khabib could actually take me down in a true wrestling situation. You know Shell, you always put the active guy over. That's what you do as a person that's done with the sport. What do I gain in trying to take down Alex Pereira? It just doesn't work that way. Ultimately, Cormier's comments provide context to the viral video and offer insight into the dynamics of interactions between retired and active athletes in the MMA world. It's a reminder that even in moments of fun and spontaneity, there's often more at play than meets the eye. Alexander Pontoya's successful defense of the UFC flyweight title twice within just 10 months has solidified his position as a dominant force in the division. With an impressive six-fight winning streak, including victories over top-ranked opponents, Pontoya has set his sights on a dream matchup with the legendary Demetrius Johnson. Acknowledging Johnson's status as the greatest flyweight of all time, Pontoya expressed his desire for a bout with the former UFC champion. Despite holding Johnson in high regard, Pontoya believes his recent accomplishments, particularly his title defenses, warrant consideration for a matchup with Johnson. He sees the opportunity to compete against Johnson as a dream scenario, even if it means engaging in sparring or training sessions if an official fight cannot be arranged. He said this, Demetrius Johnson, I think he can't do it, what he did before, you know, because the new names in the division and mixed martial arts is so different year after year, so different, the game has changed, everything. I don't know if he can do the same thing. It's like if you question if Anderson Silva wants to fight Vitor Belfort again. He doesn't want to fight because he can't get that kick again. Or Conor McGregor with Jose Aldo, he can't repeat that result. I think Demetrius Johnson can't do that again, and that's why I think he wouldn't come back. But it would be a pleasure, a dream for me, a fight with him. I don't know about contracts, that's not for me to say. But of course I'd want it. However, Pontoya acknowledges the likelihood that a fight with Johnson may never materialize due to contractual obligations with one championship and the evolution of the sport since Johnson's departure from the UFC. Nonetheless, Pontoya remains confident in his abilities and would welcome the opportunity to face Johnson if circumstances permit. Following his recent victory over Steve Ursig at UFC 301, Pontoya plans to take a well-deserved break while keeping an eye on the developments in the flyweight division. With several promising contenders emerging, Pontoya looks forward to watching the division's future matchups unfold and is eager to defend his title against the next challenger when the time comes. The highly anticipated boxing rematch between former UFC stars Nate Diaz and Jorge has been rescheduled to July 6 in Anaheim, California, shifting from its original June 1st date. The decision aims to avoid viewership conflict with UFC 302, headlined by a lightweight title clash between Islam Makachev and Dustin Poirier in Newark, New Jersey. 
Moving the Diaz vs. Gamebred fight allows it to potentially garner more attention without competing directly with the UFC event. The bout will now take place at the Honda Center in Anaheim instead of the Kia Forum in Inglewood. Jorge has openly expressed frustration with the initial June 1st booking, labeling it a bad business move during the nationwide press tour alongside Diaz. With no UFC event scheduled on July 6th, the boxing match will occupy a larger platform in combat sports that weekend. The rematch between Diaz and Gamebred follows their first encounter at UFC 244, where Gamebred emerged victorious via doctor's stoppage due to a severe laceration on Diaz's face. While their rematch was anticipated in the UFC cage, both fighters have since parted ways with the organization, leading to the boxing rematch. Diaz previously made his professional boxing debut against Jake Paul last year, resulting in a unanimous decision loss. Meanwhile, Gamebred's last professional boxing match dates back to June 2005, where he secured a majority decision win against Joseph Benjamin in Miami. Dubbed Last Man Standing, the Diaz vs. Jorge rematch will be streamed live in partnership with Fanmio and is scheduled for 10 rounds of action.